<coughs> Hello, Dean. Hey, Larry. How you doing? Doing well. Excellent. Excellent. Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining us for uh, the final session of Jeremiah's University for this week. Uh, my name is Dean Lees, and I'm on the engineering and uh, marketing team here at Buckley. Uh, the course that you'll see this afternoon is for grease duct uh, balancing, shaft requirements, um, and the uh, factory duct systems that go along with all that stuff. Um, that said, there were two other sessions. This was a three-part series that we put on. The other two were dedicated to uh, boiler stacks and breaching and a um, appliance venting. If you haven't seen those, uh, I, we're going to be making those recordings available to everyone. So uh, hopefully you can find some time to, to, um, to watch those. There's some really good information in there. And beyond that, we're also going to be offering, um, offering some sessions next week. They won't be live. They'll be recorded sessions. Uh, we'll provide the slides ahead of time for you to be able to follow along. Uh, but we will be making those available to you. So, uh, you know, within the next few days here, we'll be sending those out. Um, one more thing I'd like to touch on real quick before I uh, hand it over to Larry is just the Buckley partnership with Jeremiah. Buckley and Jeremiah uh, entered a partnership a little over a year ago now. And I really can't say enough about the resources that we have available through Larry and his team at the factory. Um, these guys really are, uh, you know, from what I've seen, the best engineering team uh, when it comes to sizing these types of systems and, uh, you know, boiler breaching and venting, appliance venting, grease duct systems, things of that nature. And, uh, you know, they can provide the full engineering calcs, 3D drawings, Revit models, uh, if you signed on early enough, you probably saw some big industrial stacks on that video that was playing. Uh, Jeremiah can do the full FEA analysis on those systems. Uh, they can provide all the structural supports. All those stacks are freestanding. And, uh, you know, these guys are just a tremendous engineering resource. And uh, I'm extremely proud of what, what we've put on here this week, uh, Buckley and Jeremiah. This is an in-depth engineering course on the sizing and application of uh, uh, venting systems and uh, grease duct systems uh, and other um, prefabricated factory duct systems. We've been in this game for quite a while at Buckley. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, this side of the industry has been overlooked. The technical side of the venting uh, industry and the uh, application of those venting systems. So we're really happy that we've been able to do this. We're, we're very happy you've all been able to join us. And, uh, you know, it's great to be able to offer this type of educational opportunity to you all. That said, there are quite a few people on the line here. We're going to uh, keep everyone muted for the duration of Larry's presentation. But if you do have questions, I encourage you to use the chat feature. Um, we will be monitoring that and we'll interrupt Larry if we have to and uh, have him address the question and we'll move on from there. So please, I encourage you. We're here for you. Uh, we want everyone to get the most out of this that they can. So please use that chat function if you have any questions. Uh, I think that wraps up what, what I wanted to say here uh, for the last time this week. And uh, I'll hand it over to you, Larry. Well, Dean, thank you. And on behalf of Jeremiah, we're so happy to be your partner also. Um, I'm gonna turn my uh, video off uh, just so I can focus on the writing on the screen. Um, again, we're going to uh, just quickly introduce Jeremiah in case you did not catch the first two. I'll spend a minute with that. And then we'll dive right into um, a, a specifically built for grease stock kitchen exhaust system. We must show you that because uh, the product is very unique, installs twice as fast, and it's turning uh, contractors into uh, believers that they can actually save money by using a prefab grease stock. 
Um, we're going to get started with some Greek, uh, some grease duct sizing, typical air flows and velocities. Everyone has done that, but this kind of preludes us into the balancing of multiple hood system. And that's what we're probably spending most of the time on. We have a unique way that we can actually balance multiple hoods so you get the proper airflow back to each uh, each kitchen hood. Uh, we're going to wrap up with some fire rated shaft options. Um, uh, NFPA 96 is real clear these days on on the two options, a, a, a field applied or a factory built uh, fire rated shaft and kind of wrap up with some other uh, duct systems that we're doing like uh, MRI uh, quench vents and dishwasher systems and stuff like that. Jeremiah's, our, our international motto is strong, open, international. Um, you see that when we are very open about uh, some of the technology we have. We uh, wanted to remind everyone that we uh, are a fairly young company, one of the youngest ones in Europe, started in the 1970s, but today we're the largest. How did we get to be so large? We started in Germany, and then with German-made machines, opened up a manufacturing plant in Spain, UK, Poland, Russia. All these uh, gold crowns are manufacturing facilities. Our newest one is right in the uh, United States, uh, States, just outside of Atlanta, so we're proud to be here. And this is where we're making 100% of the products uh, for the North American market is, is just outside of Atlanta. We brag about our management team. Uh, the managing director, Matt, he was the director of engineering at Duravent. Uh, Clark was the director of engineering at Hart & Cooley, which is Selkirk & Co. Heat Fab. German company cannot hire enough engineers. Uh, Francois was the plant manager at the uh, uh, security chimneys plant in Canada. Maxine comes from the uh, Jeremiah's Germany. So we have a, a star-studded 10 group uh, member of the tech team. This tech team is the ones that do all the sizing calculations and all the CAD systems and the Revit files. So uh, we, we're actually overloaded on, on talent, but um, we, we try to take advantage of that by um, wanting to do specifications and things up front for engineers. Uh, right now we're in a 75,000 square foot facility. We are right at 100 employees, we're operating three shifts. I mentioned all the machinery is made by uh, Jeremias in Germany, so we actually have some specific machinery made just for making these uh, lightweight uh, stainless steel systems. And then finally, we have an R&D facility up in Ohio. This is uh, the old metal bestest slab from the 1970s. Uh, we acquired this back about seven years ago be before we started producing because we had to get all the UL testing and listings done. Uh, not, not to date myself, I worked at this back in the 1980s. Uh, Clark, our director of engineering, he was back there back in the 90s uh, through the uh, thousands. Uh, so we, we had some good experience with, with this lab and we're happy to be uh, still doing testing. And we're gonna be looking at some uh, videos from inside the lab also. So just a just a quick review um, about Jeremias. Uh, let's get started right away with uh, this new commercial kitchen uh, line of products. This is unique. This is the very first factory built grease duct system that was purposely designed and built just for kitchen exhaust in the United States. All the other systems out there that's been here, there's all, all seven manufacturers. Uh, they basically were in the boiler stack business. They started using the boiler stack then as a grease duct. So I want to make it clear that we actually developed a special system just for commercial kitchen. A couple of special things about it. We take a look at the joint. We have a double expanded female joint, very unique, makes it very easy to install. The system just uh, slides together and there's a band that goes on it. With this technology, we can actually cut to fit every piece of pipe. So we could ship all four foot pipe links to the job site and the contractor just simply cuts it to fit uh, as needed. Great technology. We wanna show the uh, just a quick YouTube uh, video of installation. <clears throat> You're cleaning the joints. You always wanna do that with uh, the stainless steel. We, we use standard off the shelf uh, silicone. We actually uh, show uh, which silicones are approved, such as uh, Dow Corning 736 or Red Devil Pro. And um, these silicones is actually hidden behind the exhaust by that two and a quarter inch overlap. So these are overlapping systems on the joint. Uh, you simply push it together and move the, move the locking band down in place. It's really that easy. So it's a very easy system to install. 
very quiet, very fast. Uh, thanks to the, the patented features of the stiffeners and the joint, we're able to uh, really get a low cost on a system like this. Now, that's very different than the, than the flange system that's on the market today. Here they put the, the caulking, maybe a fire caulking. Captive Air puts a fire caulking on the flange. We put the flange together. You've got a slight offset action going on. That's, that's typical, there's no way to stop that. And you basically got the fire caulk or the silicone ex exposed right to the exhaust. That's the reason some of these other systems actually have a two week cure time uh, because of the fire caulk. So uh, again, the overlapping technology is great because the silicone is always hidden. Uh, double wall systems, both the reduced clearance and the zero clearance, we do, uh, we take advantage of our technology on our boiler stack and engine exhaust side that uses a um, an outer jacket that is expanded here. We have the outer jacket that's expanded. We also, we shove insulation. We actually use a one and a half inch blanket. We compress it down to one and a quarter. So that is what holds the inner and outer pipe together where um, we don't have any brackets and spot welding going on like all the other producers. No, no, no reason for that. That costs money, wastes time. So in this system, you simply just push it together the outer band locks it in place. It's, it's, it's such a simple system. Uh, we're excited to uh, just show you a quick video on that also. So this is the uh, reduced clearance. It's an inch and a quarter space. You see how the insulation is uh, is, is packed in there tightly. It's um, There's no brackets or, or still pieces in there. That's also one of the reasons we have some of the best clearance to combustibles because we don't have any hot spots at, at the joints on these systems. So you're applying the caulk in the middle of the uh, two and a half, two and a quarter inch uh, uh, overlap. And again, that's all outside the, the flue gas stream. It's, it's a full inch, uh, inch and a quarter away from the end of the pipe. And as you shove it down in, into place or push it into place, um, it, the silicone is, 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 is not you know, going into the inner. It's being captivated by the, uh, the double expansion. And you put the outer jacket on, and that's it. Very, very simple installation. And uh, we know that um, contractors are already loving the, uh, this product. That, that was a picture of the reduced clearance, the uh, zero clearance product. Oh, let me get my pin back. The zero clearance product has a three and a quarter inch thick, heavy, um, heavy density fiber insulation. So all three together, you got the single wall, which is a direct replacement of welded steel systems. You can still fill apply insulation to layers on the single wall. We got the double wall system. That's the most popular for, for fast food restaurants, um, single story buildings when you don't have to penetrate a fire rated wall or ceiling. There's no reason to go with the heavy uh, zero clearance. And then you, the uh, third option would be the zero clearance. And this, this is basically what you use to go through a building where you have to go through multiple or a single uh, fire rated wall or ceiling. Don't forget that we have rectangular. Now, sometimes we say round doesn't fit. This is about 20% more in cost, so it's more costly. We know it's harder to clean. Um, we, and we know there's about a 50% savings on time when cleaning a round duct. So rectangular is harder to clean. Um, but still, sometimes round doesn't fit. Uh, this has no flexibility like the round system does. So we, we use rectangular where needed in the systems, and then we just go back to round, um, typically when we, when we can because uh, of headroom uh, constraints and, and, and stuff like that. So rectangular is about, uh, available. There are three manufacturers making rectangular now, so it's not a, not a flat spec or anything like that. And yet we have another option. We actually can take our reduced clearance product because we're using any of these three insulation here between the wall we can actually add a single layer to the installed product to achieve the ASTME-E2336. So that's an option that uh, was never available before. And that's because um, we actually take an inch and a half blanket, which is the same blanket of these products here. We compress it to the one and a quarter inch space, and that's what holds the inner and outer pipe together. And so you're adding the, the, the second layer in the field. So we're all the manufacturers that we use are on board with that. Um, we also have a complete line of grease duct 
kitchen exhaust fittings, which is unique because again, this is the only commercial kitchen exhaust that is specifically designed to be used as a kitchen exhaust restuck. So our 45 degree elbows, they have an access panel right on them. Our 90 degree turns, there already provides the slope, has a uh, access panel right on it. Uh, instead of a boot tee or a bullhead tee, we actually have reduction uh, bullhead tee, so we could maybe have a, a 14 inch, uh, 14 inch, uh, then with a 20 inch uh, diameter outlet. The one fitting is taken care of four or five or six different fittings. Uh, our, our boot tees to make a, a, a combination, we actually have maybe a, you could have a 10 inch diameter, 10 inch diameter, with a 14 inch outlet. Notice how the body's actually tapered. We're following proper smack the guidelines with the flow. So it's really unique. This is the first time to see a kitchen exhaust system act actually purposely designed uh, just for uh, grease ducts, kitchen exhaust. Um, the one of the most important things, and we'll be talking about this, is the no weld hood adapters. Now, not to let the cat out of the bag, but the Diameter changes that we're able to do with these no weld hood adapters is really how we balance hood systems. So uh, we have two options uh, up to 16 inch diameter, we do make a round system. And then from 14 to 20 inch diameter, it's an oval system where you never have more than a, a 12 inch space for the hood cavity. Now, there, every hood manufacturer has an option. So you must make sure that the hood collars are shipped loose in order to use the, the system. And then thus you're able to balance out the hood system by using different diameters at different times. So every manufacturer again has an option to ship the collars loose. That's what you should uh, strive to remember to do. At least we will keep on reminding the contractors that. <clears throat> so here's the detail of the 14 through 16 inch diameter. Again, we're always at uh, 12 inches uh, right here, and then we just get wider or longer on the uh, oval side. And then a lot of times uh, the, uh, it's, it's becoming more and more standard that the uh, manufacturers of the kitchen hoods are shipping the uh, the hood with automatically with a round collar. That's getting more and more common. Uh, the, the, there are eight of us manufacturers making you all listed a uh, prefab restock. And so the industry standard is a half inch flange. So we basically put a half inch flange on a small piece of pipe, supply the sealant with a V band. So you have a flange to flange system at the hood, just like you would with um, other uh, other manufacturers that use nothing but a flange to flange throughout. So uh, just I just wanted to make sure that you saw uh, the purpose of the the CK commercial exhaust line setup. It's it's very unique, and we're uh, happy to show you that. Um, so. Be sure to be looking for that. The data sheets are on the handouts for each of the product lines. So we're going to get into <clears throat> sizing uh, grease duct systems. This is no nothing new, the airflow laws. Uh, so bear with me. I, I, I know that every engineer online has done this. Uh, so we're, the target velocity on kitchen exhaust is 1,800 feet per minute, the target velocity. The minimum velocity used to be 1500, but the updated NFPA 96 standards now say 500 feet per minute minimum because of the uh, variable speed technology, variable speed hoods, fans. Um, and then the maximum velocity is typically around 2000 feet per minute. But I want everyone to know that I know of systems that go well above 2500 feet per minute, up to 2800 feet per minute on some of the other uh, these slot extraction hoods like used in fast food restaurants. I know every every Hardee's fast food restaurant is up around 2,800 feet per minute velocity on the entire hood system or the, the duct system. So uh, there are round UL listed systems going much higher than the rectangular systems on the velocities. And then to, to size the duct work, it's you, know, you take the hood CFM, you divide it by the target, Velocity that equals the area of the ductwork. So you, uh, you you find the closest area and then you uh, check that with the uh, um, the actual CFM divided by the uh, selected area of the duct of the duct you select and then that's the actual feet per minute. Kind of be above 500, you should stay around you know 1800. Try to stay below 2000, maybe get up to 2100 uh, feet per minute. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a 3200 CFM hood as we go through the next couple of examples. And we're also going to show off our proprietary um, grease duct sizing software, which actually at the same time will balance systems out for us automatically. So we're, for the first couple of examples, and, and by the way, the, the, the software actually will size the fan static pressure as well. So you take, we're going to use a 20, a 3200 CFM on the next couple of slides. So we're going to take 3200 divided by 1800, which is 1 1.77. We see that 18 inch diameter as 1.7, real close to that. And by the way, so the 18 inches is, is 1.76. And by the way, we uh, I would guarantee you that if the hood ship with the uh, if the hood if the collar ship with the hood the hood ship with the collar attached, you'd probably have something like a 12 by 21 inch outlet, which is real close to that 1800 feet per minute. Uh, then you do a, a check at the very end. You take the CFM that um, the hood is has, and you divide it by the actual selected diameter, and then you have the actual feet per minute here of 1811, so that's that's good to go. So now that's how, how that's how duct systems are sized on the grease duct side, especially when you're stuck with uh, certain diameters. And by the way, Jeremiah does make some odd diameters like 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. We actually make these diameters. Uh, that's because we do a lot of fast food restaurants and we want to make sure we don't uh, jeopardize and use the, you know, the wrong velocities. So what we have is a, a software that's unique. This is a, a in, still in beta testing, but we have enough done that we're actually using it every day with uh, balancing hood systems. Uh, with the software, you actually sketch out the system you're doing. I'll get into the software in a minute. Um, you add the hood information, and then you calculate. So let's uh, let's get into the program here. This is a HTML based program. And I'm going to start out with a new layout. This is just a single hood example. It's a grease duct. I'm going to use uh, the reduced clearance CK. We already sized this, the hood outlet for 18 inch. And I'm just going to draw a line, click, click, and we have 10 feet. And I have that line selected, so I can put the CFM right here, 3200 CFM at a 0.6 static pressure drop through the hood and 18 inch diameter. So from here, see the uh, hood, actually put the, uh, the hood information on. I'm going to uh, calculate it. I have my minimum velocities at, eight, at 1500, target at 1800. Uh, maximum at 2,000, and I'm going to have the uh, uh, the tool actually uh, select the, the best diameter. So we can see that here's the uh, the 18 inch diameter. Here's the uh, feet per minute that we actually calculated. Uh, here's the fan static pressure requirement, 0.826. So the duct is a 0.6, about 0.26 is the uh, the ductwork, and we just basically size the fan in the ductwork. So um, Pretty easy stuff, so this is not abnormal. This is something that you probably would imagine that we're doing every day. I'm gonna take all this and uh, erase it. So this is what we just did. We calculated, got 3200 uh, CFM on the fan, and uh, we know what the fan spec needs to be. So, uh, just before we get into the multiple hood sizing, I mean, we, we can go a little bit crazy. Uh, let me just get back into uh, the program here. And I can put this in a schematic mode. I'll, sh uh, I'll show you um, the system in a 3D also, but uh, look, here we have four feet. Draw. Four feet of vertical, four feet. And by the way, I can put the CFM right here, 3200 CFM, 0.6. I shouldn't have erased all this. 18 inch. 
So here's the hood information. And now we're going 10 feet horizontal, zigzagging around some columns. I know that you engineers, you never do stuff like this. It's always the architect's fault. But uh, I want everyone to know that we really appreciate the more ductwork. Uh, that's, that's always good to have more ductwork in, the, uh, in these uh, systems. So what I did is I just quickly sketched out uh, you know, a fairly complicated system here. Um, but the, the program automatically puts in the uh, elbows that have the clean out in place. It is a hard elbow. Uh, we may see some pretty high static pressures, but let's go ahead and calculate. And we see that uh, we're looking at a static pressure of well over two inches, but um, 18 inch duct diameter still. At least you got the fan sized. Uh, myself, I would probably you know, think about taking some of these uh, hard elbows out and maybe replacing with a, uh, a more of a radius elbow that we have and then put the access panels uh, beside, put the access panels beside the uh, uh, the elbows because every change of direction needs an access panel. Uh, the other manufacturers, they all use 90 degree T's that you find in uh, boiler stacks. So we can calculate now with all the um, reduced uh, resistance K vectors on the elbows, and now we're down to just over an inch and a half static pressure. So these 90 degree T's you see that the other manufacturers use, that it does add a lot of static. So, but that's not a bad thing. I mean, as long as it's sized properly, that's that's the, the concern. So I wanted to again, just show you an idea of a, of a fairly complicated run and how we just took about an inch of static pressure off just by choosing different fittings. So we did the 3200. We calculated, and um, that's what we came up with. But I just showed you I reduced the, uh, the static pressure a lot. So pretty easy stuff. I mean, this is what, what you do all day long for all your duct work. Um, so let's talk about um, this no weld hood adapter because that's the key. Now, everyone should realize that if I had a hood right here, this is hood number one, and I have a hood right here that's number two and i'm doing a duct system into a fan you're not going to get the same cfm from these two hoods if you size only based upon the the velocity so this is what the uh, the trick of the snow weld hood adapter is because it allows you to upsize or downsize the diameter of the hood exhaust collar so you can balance out multiple hoods that's the reason we're, we're using this no weld hood adapter. It's really the key. So let's take a look at this. We'll get into uh, balancing multiple uh, kitchen hoods. Uh, here's the nicest picture I could find on the internet for uh, a balance act. And the idea is to balance a, a kitchen hood exhaust system without using dampers. There are some listed dampers on the market, but they're, uh, um, they're only used in the vertical configuration. So we can't use dampers otherwise to balance the, the kitchen exhaust. So again, the key is the no weld hood adapters. Remember, the kitchen hood manufacturer must ship the collar loose. That's an option for every kitchen hood manufacturer. They just got to be told ship the collar loose. They got to ship with the collar as part of the, of the listing, but they can ship it loose. No issue with that. Um, so then we use our balancing software that I just showed you, and it's going to automatically select whatever. Uh, uh, the best diameter to use on these various uh, no weld hood adapters. So let's take a look at a couple of uh, 3200 CFM kitchen hoods. Well, this is what the system looks like sketched out. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm starting with 18 inch diameter because that's what we already know the 3200 uh, CFM target velocity is. Um, 0.6, so this is the same kitchen hood, we just have it on a, on a multiple kitchen hood system. So if you put a fan right here and the fan is at uh, 6400 CFM, I think everyone's gonna realize that no matter how oversized this trunk is, or this trunk, if it's all 18 inch diameter, you're gonna get much more greater CFM from that hood. Because you don't have a you don't you don't have the balancing going back to the uh, to the last hood, so let's uh, let's go ahead and draw this up on the uh, on the screen. 
Let me get back into the program. For sort of new. New layout. This is two kitchen hoods. It's a grease duct blink layout. I'll use the reduced clearance again. We'll start with 18 inch. We gotta start with one diameter just so the uh, the fittings automatically are, are are placed in the routing. So we actually have a two foot connector rise on the PowerPoint example. Here we're going 10 feet. Here we go 10 feet this way. You got a two foot connector rise on this hood. And by the way, I should be putting these this hood information in. Round 18 inch. And 10 feet this way. And then vertically up through the roof to the fan, uh, 10 feet. I forgot to put the two feet in there. That's why it's shown as yellow. You got to put this information in for the hood. 3200 CFM.6 round 18 inch. Okay, so this is the system as we show in the PowerPoint. Let's show what this 3D view looks like. Actually, actually puts it to scale. So we're in the process of this actually being able to output Revit designs. Oh, I got kicked out of it. I'm sorry. Two hoods, pre stuck, blank layout. Uh, so we do this. So we have a two foot uh, connector rise, 3200 CFM, 0.6, round 18 inch. Uh, 10 feet this way, 10 feet this way, two foot drop to the kitchen hood. Two feet. Uh, here we have 3200 CFM, 0.6, round 18 inch. The last hood. 10 feet and then 10 feet up to the kitchen fan. So that's what we're looking at. And we're going to calculate this and let's see what the uh, program does. It's going to make some changes. It's going to change um, some diameters around. Obviously this, uh, this trunk over here is going to be larger diameter because we've got, we're trying to maintain an 1800 feet per minute target. So let's see what happens here. We come up with a 1.8 inch pressure drop for the fan. Let's see, it actually reduced the closer hood connector down to 16 inch. So we would actually be using a 16 inch diameter no weld hood adapter on this connector right here with the same CFM hood over here, using all 18 inch with an 18 inch no weld hood adapter. It's a great thing using a 26 inch, in, inch common. So I'm going to go back and take a look and see what the PowerPoint says. We did the calculation and we come up with that 1.8 uh, inch water column with a 26 inch common. Here you see that we used the, uh, the program went down to a 16 inch diameter kept the furthest hood at 1800. The goal of the program is to match at least within 10% over what the target uh, CFM exhaust is on the hood. Now, a couple things here. Um, well, let's, let's do it. Let's do one last one. This is the last one we're gonna do as an example, a, a three hood system. So let me uh, get into, um, we're going to use some other CFMs. We're going to use 2000 CFM on the furthest hood, 2700, 2700. Uh, add a couple offsets in here. So this gets kind of complicated. We're going to draw the system out completely at 14 inch diameter. So let's get into uh, the sizing software. We'll close all these 
extra windows. Okay, so we have a new layout. Three exhaust system, pre stucked link layout. We use reduced clearance. Uh, we're going to start at 14 inch. We're looking at uh, the 2000 CFM hood. You do the velocity check, it's going to be around 1800 feet per minute. So we're going to just draw the system out at 14 inch. So we're looking at uh, two feet on the furthest away hood. This hood is uh, 2000 CFM. 0.6 round, let's say it has a 14 inch starting out. And then we're kind of zigzagging around 10 feet this way, uh, 10 feet this way, five feet to the next hood. Uh, we go down two feet to a 2700 CFM, just using 0.6. Obviously, we want to get the uh, information of each hood uh, so we can exactly match up the system to make it balance properly. Um, going next to the next uh, kitchen outlet, uh, that is 10 feet. Dropping down to the hood, two feet. This again is 2700.6 round, 14 inch. Going uh, five feet horizontal and then 10 feet up through the roof to the exhaust fan. So this is what we sketched out. That actually matches the PowerPoint um, presentation we did. <clears throat> I'm gonna get into the uh, calculation for the kitchen exhaust. I, I keep my same defaults, 1500 minimum, 2000 max. My target's 1800. I'm going to um, have the program automatically select the best diameters to, to actually balance out this system as close as, po as close as possible, actually within not, not more than 10% over. So we see that uh, we got some uh, different diameters, 14 inch, 13 inch, 12 inch. So what the uh, program did is that it actually used uh, 28 inch here and here. So we got 28 inch. It used a 12 inch diameter no weld connector on this hood here. We're over 2700, but um, not too much over. It used a, a 22 inch common, and, and then it had a 13 inch diameter no weld hood connector on this one. You can see how the system is balancing out again using the diameters. And then uh, the, the, the smallest amount of CFM hood that's all the way back in the back is actually having a larger 14 inch diameter system so we can actually allow more of that air, air to get back to the furthest one. So this is a this is what grease stuck balancing of multiple hoods is all about. Um, so let's go back and look at this. We did the calculation. And that's what we just looked at on the screen, the 12 inch diameter, 13 inch diameter, 14 even though the CFMs are different. But uh, let's, let's mess around a little bit with the system. We can actually, uh, uh, we, we, we drew this out using the default uh, two gore design, hard 90, 90 degree turn. So we can actually, uh, maybe let's change all these to a nice sweeping turn and then put the access panels maybe right beside the change of direction. A little bit more costly grease stuck, but maybe we can get the, uh, uh, the fan cost down or uh, even uh, you know, more more important maybe the efficiency. So let's let's take a look at that. Let me uh, get my pen. So let's look back at this design right here, and let's uh, let's change uh, these out from a two gore to more of a three gore sweeping turn. Change this one here to the same. So we were at uh, two and a half inches of static. Let's see what we did here. We went down below two inches. And I actually changed some of the diameters again. So let's, uh, let's close and see what the program did. Um, we actually jumped up to 14 inch there. We jumped up to 18 inch on this no weld hood adapter and kept this one 
smaller all the way back to 14. The idea is that we're trying to balance out the system. Uh, the computer program is a great, a great way to do that. And, and so again, this is something that we're excited to kind of show off. Uh, this is where the technology is going um, in the future. And that was, that's what we just looked at, was the different diameters. So again, we're trying to get as close as possible to the 27, 2700 on these two, 2700 and 2000 on this one. So actually we were able to, just by changing some of these fittings around, uh, actually get a, uh, a better system for the customer. So just a quick review, um, uh, it's really the no weld hood adapters we're making is the key because we can take and use maybe a 10 inch diameter, a 14 or a 12 inch diameter at different times to really balance out the uh, air flows in the kitchen exhaust system. So this, we're happy to show you this. And this is, again, this is what you get when you have a purposely designed duct system with all the accessories that is built just for kitchen exhaust systems. I won't lie to you, the duct system is being used for other duct work, but at the initial development was all about kitchen exhaust systems. We're gonna take a look at some fire rated options. And I'm gonna quote NFPA 96 because they say um, commercial kitchen fires or, or duck fires is a cause of over $100 million in direct damage per year. So there's eight of us restock manufacturers today. All of us use stainless steel. We all have the same UL listed option. Some have the added on ASTM E2336 as an option as well. But today's codes clearly, clearly state there's two options for a, um, a fire rated shaft or a two hour fire rated enclosure. So let's look at these two options. The first is a field applied for ASTM E2336. Second option, a factory built system that is listed in accordance with UL 2221. And I should make a sub note here that if the manufacturer has been tested and listed and shown in our instructions like we have, we're allowed to use our single wall systems and we can field apply to make it the ASTM E2336 as an option also. So uh, the options, we'll take a look closely at the ASTM, ASTM E2336. Three three six. Uh, historically, this is what has been out there. Um, I also want to comment that uh, historically, carbon steel has always been used. And I want to show you. I'm, we're going to show you some videos where the carbon steel actually melts very quickly when you wrap the system to where the heat cannot dissipate. So this uh, this UL twenty two twenty one is one of the reasons every UL listed restock manufacturer uses stainless steel. So the fill apply the systems basically look like this. You got the rectangular grease duct. You wrap it once, you wrap it twice. That meets the ASTM E2336. Um, there is some options out there. I mean, we have a, a single wall ductwork, which is a direct replacement to welded steel. It's stainless steel construction. Uh, we actually work with all three of these manufacturers. So you can actually use any of these three and take and wrap the system twice in the field um, if, if that's the option that the contractors want to do. Usually when unions get involved, you have a union sheet metal guy, you have a union insulator guy. Sometimes it's better just to sell the, <laughs> the stainless steel to the union sheet metal guy and then let the union insulator guy uh, wrap it in the field. But uh, it's best for the owner if they actually just buy the system in double wall already insulated. There's actually another option we have. We actually use all three of these manufacturers as options for this insulation that's holding the double wall system together. So again, we take an inch and a half blanket and we compress it to inch and a quarter. And that's what holds the inner and outer pipe together. So what you have is automatically the first layer of one of these three, just add a one second layer and you actually achieve the ASTM E2336. So this is an exciting option. We were seeing this being used a lot of times at um, sports stadiums and, and stuff that we have a lot of duct work 
and you don't really need a zero clearance ductwork grain through the building. And then we use the AST2336 where we need to. So uh, we want to introduce the uh, the UL2221. Of course, we know the most about this. Again, uh, all the manufacturers, not just Jeremiah's, have gone through these testing. We're actually going to show you the two tests involved where the uh, the chimney uh, the, the grease duct systems are actually burned up. The first test, which is good for both the grease duct and the enclosure, is a two a 2,000 degree test for 30 minutes, and that simulates an internal kitchen fire, grease duct fire. The second test is an external, which is a fire rating engulfment test. That's a 2,000 degree test for two hours, and that's the, that's the internal external test. So what we do is we take a test subject, typically about 15 feet of horizontal, 10 feet of vertical, and we connect a flue gas generator to the system. We also have thermal couples measuring the skin temperatures to make sure it's either zero clearance to combustibles or a reduced clearance, what we state in the IOM. So the test setup looks like this right here. Uh, this is Rod Carr, our technician at the lab. This is the flue gas generator right here. Close look at a 8 million BTU burner. I took that off a boiler and we just made some ch changes on it. And then the, uh, the, the test subject is right here being tested. So what I have is actually um, some video to show you. This is inside our lab. So let's take a look at the video. This is a, uh, a 30 minute long video. So I'm gonna basically jump through this pretty quick, but I wanna show you, uh, and, and I want everyone to get an idea about how long the 30 minutes is, because look, look at the burner. You have that stainless steel being cherry red. Uh, that starts to change color uh, around 1400 degrees. So you have a cherry red stainless steel for 30 minutes. And um, that's why all the UL listed grease duct manufacturers are stainless steel and we can never use carbon steel. So knowing this, um, what we did, here's some more pictures of the, uh, the hot temperatures. What we did is we actually took a carbon steel system a 16 gauge black steel system. We did this about two and a half years ago in our lab. We wrapped it twice with the fire wrap insulation. And we, we like talking to people in person because we, we have people guess how long they think the how long they think the carbon steel lasted. Amazing people don't read the uh, slides, but it fails after three minutes into the test. So let's just take a look at this uh, quick video. Oops. Here we go. This video is only three minutes long. I want everyone to kind of look at the middle flat portion of the ductwork and just watch it start to collapse very quickly. That insulation, which is double wrapped, is holding all that heat against that carbon steel. Everyone knows that you know carbon steel is going to start failing above six, seven hundred degrees. This is two thousand degrees. It lasted three minutes into the um, into the 30 minute test. So that's why you see in our literature, uh, you know, the before and after on the left hand side, the stainless steel systems, and then on the, on the right hand side, the carbon steel systems, how it fails. Just to bring something a little bit more closer home to you guys up in Massachusetts, we actually have some people from New York on the line also. Uh, the New York City code, New York City, does require 12 gauge black steel. So we do a lot of work in the city. Um, you know, Jeremiah is a, is a new manufacturer, only been in the States for five years. So we thought we would uh, talk to the, uh, the New York City code officials about this because they thought maybe a 12 gauge system would actually last longer than three minutes. So what we did is uh, just uh, about 12 months ago, we, we actually had a large uh, 12 gauge system built and uh, we, did the setup, double wrap insulation. We invited the, the officials to come to our lab in Ohio. And we were kind of like, we kind of knew what we were doing. We already burned up some other carbon steel in the past. So this was staged pretty well with the backdrop and the lights off. But look, after three minutes, the carbon steel is going to, it actually collapsed almost faster because of the weight of the 12 gauge versus the weight of the, um, um, of, the of the 16 gauge. So again, the double wrap systems on, 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 on black steel is what's making a lot of systems fail. 
And again, that's why, again, all the manufacturers are uh, listed at um, uh, using, using stainless steel. The second test uh, all the manufacturers do is the engulfment test. So that's uh, basically you put the test assembly inside an oven, and you're also testing the through penetration fire stop. So just some pictures. This is what the system looks like installed uh, before the firing is done. This is a two again two hour test. Uh, let's see here. And then the system is fired up. Oops. And so this is looking through a weep hole. That's what the uh, 2000 degree oven looks like on from the outside looking in. Oops. We're just about wrapping up here. And then the whole system is lifted up and sprayed down with the fire hose. We have a thermal shock as part of the test also. So once that's all done and cools off, the system is basically deemed uh, you know, structurally sound and, and usable like you see on the right-hand side. Of course, it's charred up a little bit, but it is all stainless steel. So that was a quick introduction to what the testing goes on, the UL 2221, that the, the codes now recognize. Even the rectangular system that we have, it is a stainless steel line system, has to go through the same test. Um, and again, we have rectangulars available. It does cost more. It's harder to clean, but sometimes round just simply doesn't fit. So we're going to finish up. Um, we'll actually be done in a few uh, minutes. Uh, we want to take a look at some other duct systems. This is becoming popular. We're, uh, Jeremiah is sort of leading the way here, but we have some of the manufacturers also already following our footsteps. ISO 6944 is a two-hour fire rated uh, HVAC system. We actually use the UL4, uh, 1479 for uh, the fire stops. And we can actually put this certification on just about any ductwork that we make. So I wanna kind of show you that, first of all, um, our, our DWFL, the flange system, the double wall, which has the, the thick three and a quarter inch thick heavy duty insulation. This qualifies and has a certification for this ISO uh, standard. Also, it's listed for use as a um, engine exhaust, a grease duct, a gas vent. Because of the 444 stainless steel, we can actually put this on the uh, the special gas vent systems and actually have a fire rated shaft already. So this this is really uh, something that can save the owner a ton of money uh, because you're not building the shaft around the systems as you go through the floors. We can also do this uh, on the other duct systems. We want to think about the commercial kitchen exhaust, I mean, it's already being used on other dock duct work because it's so easy to install. So people are wanting to use more and more of it on other applications. Of course, the, Z, the ZC models, the zero clearance models, uh, that's um, great for the ISO. They, they both carry the ISO 6944 certification for a, a fire rated shaft assembly. Um, the rectangular systems do not. Uh, we eventually we'll get the uh, the ISO on the uh, rectangular systems. So as we as we finish up, we're going to be taking a look at some other systems we do. Of course, engine exhaust. Uh, this is one of the biggest things we do around the country because our pressure rating is 90 inches, three psi, and that's after 1400 degrees. No one else does that. Everyone else is 60 inches after uh, 1000 degrees because our, our overlapping technology that protects the seal. That's how we get by with the higher temperatures, higher pressures. Of course, when you have a, a, dish, a, a, a grease dock for a kitchen hood, you're always going to have a grease, a, a dishwasher exhaust. Uh, MRI quench vents is becoming very popular. Uh, we do not use 444 on these systems because that's not good for uh, hot, uh, strong negative conditions. It's a phytic steel, so only good for like minus 150, minus 200. So we use the austenic uh, stainless steels for quench vents, good for minus 450 um, plus degrees. We supply special fittings that are anchored to the building. So we have 8,500 pound thrush uh, forces against applied and we actually go up to eight, eight PSI on the uh, pressure testing. So the MRI quench vent is something that's really becoming uh, popular. Fume hood, people are recognizing our, 
our flagship stainless steel 444 is really better than 316L. Uh, some would argue it's actually better than AL294C because it, it welds better, it bends better than AL294C. So this is the, the perfect type of steel to be used on uh, using on fume hood exhaust. Uh, laundry exhaust, especially commercial laundry exhaust, these are typically gas-fired appliances, so you do have flue gases inside the exhaust. We have a UL label that says anything less than 230. That's because of the uh, polypropylene uh, label we have, the options went on the uh, special gas vent. We actually can install our single watt zero clearance to combustibles. Wood-burning pizza ovens becoming quite popular. There's only three of us manufacturers that actually have this HT listing added on that's a 2100 degree for a burnout from creosote so no issue with that with our, our technology so pizza oven manufacturer state 103 and 1978 is required finally we get into a lot of commercial lining systems we do the static analysis to make sure you're not going to buckle at the bottom um, a lot of times we can design systems where you have uh, uh, spacers in, in place, but if that can't be done, we can design a totally freestanding system. We have a brochure de dedicated to this uh, this type of system. Look at uh, this little picture right here on the far right hand side is like one of these um, one of these joints that are bolted together in the field. It's picking up a, a 4,000 pound coil steel, just doing some internal uh, uh, testing to make sure our calculations are right. Um, Loring coffee roasters, these spike up to 1,500 degrees. They were sort of lost by using the flange to flange systems for years. I had to replace them every year. Uh, we're going five years since we've been in existence in the uh, existence in the states. No issues at all. So the uh, 444, the Jeremiah's conical systems can hold up to them temperatures. No sealant, no uh, no issue at all. A ton of bakery ovens. We're going to wrap up here. We have uh, cantilevers. Here's a 25 feet freestanding. Above the roof, we're using the stainless steel bracket to basically hold these up in space. You don't want the uh, something that's it's being influenced by the flue gases holding the stacks up. This is a backdrop on a data center, so these are engine exhaust systems. We designed this mass structure to be totally independent. Yes, it's attached to the data center, but no loads are being transferred across. And finally, we we uh, we do a lot of these mass systems. The idea is that we designed a a three part uh, filled bolt together mass system to hold this stack up 90 feet vertical. And then you install the lightweight all stainless steel zero maintenance uh, flue system and, and basically you're uh, good to go. So we're getting close to, to the, the time allowed. I'm going to ask Dean if you could uh, step back in. Uh, we want to thank everyone for um, attending uh, the series. Hopefully you got something out of this. We wanted to keep this as, as technical as um, possible. Dean? Thanks, looks Larry. Like, looks like you've been sleeping. Uh, it's getting, getting a little dark in here. I don't, I don't have enough lighting at my desk. Um, just to reiterate what Larry just said there, thank you everyone for joining us this week. Hopefully you got to participate in uh, all three of the webinars that were offered this week as part of Jeremiah's University. Um, this was an incredible uh, educational, technical uh, webinar series. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Jeremiah. Um, it's, it's been great. And just to reiterate what I said at the beginning of this session, these are all recorded. Uh, all three of the sessions that we did this week are recorded. We will be sharing those with you, and uh, we'd be happy to set something up for everyone in your office to do something virtually for your uh, entire staff, if that's something that interests you. If you have any questions uh, following these seminars, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to answer them. And uh, I hope everyone has a good rest of the week. Thank you all, stay safe. We're signing off now, goodbye.